The AFA algae, uh, there's a lot of different pronunciations I've heard around the world. I pronounce it aphanizomine and flas aqua. There's a bunch of other scientists that, uh, but but all in all, we, we shorten it to an acronym of AFA. And mm -hmm. this AFA is a cousin algae of spirulina. Um, so they're uh, direct cousins with one exception. There's a portion of the AFA algae that has uh, something referred to as PEA. And that PEA is what makes it so unique and gives it the unique properties um, in stem enhance that uh, helps enhance the migration of, of uh, stem cells throughout your body. So uh, the lake is, um, is fed by two major inlets, uh, the Sprague and the Williamson rivers that are aquifers that come directly from Crater Lake, which is one of the purest and deepest lakes in the world. So the uniqueness of this would be very difficult to replicate anywhere in the world because of both us being a high elevation lake um, and uh, uh, very little pollution in our area and being fed with uh, uh, basically naturally purified water coming from ultimately the from Crater Lake. Uh, Mother Nature knew what she was doing here, and um, there's, you know, uh, AFA has been identified in a couple other very small, inaccessible lakes, which they have to be a high elevation lake, uh, um, but um, nowhere near the scale of Klamath Lake, which is the reason that we're here. So, yeah, this is pretty much the only place in the world that you can get this unique algae at scale. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, so that's why we're here. Yeah, the, the harvest varies usually, uh, you know, give or take a month, um, but basically starts harvest sometime in, uh, July mm -hmm. and it ends, uh, sometime in November. So we okay. do have that window of opportunity um, we are a high mountain lake and we do get lots of snow and freezing. We get a true four seasons here and the lake does freeze over. Uh, and with the lake freezing over, we have found a profile uh, within that um, uh, freezing of the lake, uh, the top crust of creating a much, you know, more prolific algae. So it happens every year. Um, as soon as we, that's basically what we stop harvest at is when the lake starts to freeze or when we hit capacity in all of our inventory, all of our freezers, you know, anywhere that we can store algae, we do. Uh, and that's, we're actually calling our harvest early uh, this year only because we're full. We have, we're at capacity as far as inventory and, uh, and buffered inventory in the form of wet algae in preparation for Harvest, or I mean, uh, production. Well, um, we've already mentioned the harvesters that we build. We have three different methodologies. We typically only use two now. We basically uh, scrapped one that was more indiscriminate and it took a lot more filtration throughout our downflow or downstream production. And we basically scoop it or use string harvesters to uh, harvest the algae, which is a natural filtration process that uh, mitigates any uh, microcystis or any other uh, contaminants from coming into what we're harvesting at the time. And then uh, once we're there, we move to our process facility where we have a very unique, uh, both wet and dry process that we use to uh, keep from damaging any of the uh, uh, attributes of the algae. Um, you know, we don't overheat it. We have the gentlest drying process in the food world. We have patents on our drying process. Um, and a lot of the wet process that we do prior to getting dry uh, are very unique processes that uh, we've uh, either built in-house or uh, retrofitted to our uh, to what worked best for our, you know, microalgae and the drying process. We have patents, uh, around it and, you know, have also used it for drying organic foods, fruits and vegetables, 
but most, you know, the, the majority of the time it's drying, uh, you know, the uh, extracts from either uh, stem enhance or cyactive, which is a spirulina based product. And we take the phycocyanin out of that in wet process, dry it in the drying process. And that's where we lock everything in and stabilize the product for shelf life. So at its peak uniqueness, you know, without uh, any degradation in the product profiles. Any other drying process that we have used, we own a freeze dryer. So we okay. do a lot of our comparisons with the top leading drying process in the food world, and we own it. And, uh, and we do constant comparisons. And um, with that methodology, it's more of a high pressure vacuum system. And what we find is it homogenizes everything. So instead of doing an extract, it actually blends everything together. Actually, it diminishes it quite a bit where we can't even get an efficacious dose of it without wow. maybe you know, using, you know, taking at least a kilo of it per serving, which would be unreasonable. Um, the, the spray dry and drum dry process completely decimates the, uh, the, uh, uh, the micronutrients uh, and all of the extracts that we're trying to salvage for efficacy, basically all the PEA, um, it, it, it demolishes it. So, Whenever you do see other companies that are publishing, you know, publishing or advertising Klamath Lake algae, they all use a spray dry process. And when you atomize this product, um, it completely decimates anything that uh, that would be salvageable. It's still a good source of protein, I would imagine, and you still have a, a, a decent shelf life. But there, and if they're making any claims uh, anywhere near what we claim as far as stem cell migration, then their claims are absolutely false. I always use the comparison of a peanut in a peanut shell. And sure. we're trying to get the peanut out of the peanut shell because the peanut is what holds all the efficacy. Now, mm -hmm. the peanut shell is still healthy for you. Um, and and has some great macronutrients to it when combined uh, or concentrated, but we have to remove that. Any other company that says that they have what we have, they use solvents, butane or ethanol to do an extraction. We're solventless. We don't use any solvents in our processes and we do a cold water extraction. We basically use mother nature and help her in the form of me mechanized pro processes to get to the absolute purest expression of this algae. And so, you know, we basically freeze it, we crack the cell structure, we spin it really fast in a centrifuge, we concentrate it in a reverse osmosis that we use in reverse, and then we, and that's where we concentrate it. So if you're buying other people's, you're buying the peanut, the peanut shell, everything involved in that all crunched together and that's what you're eating. Um, with us, you're ingesting a purified peanut, no shell, no membrane, no anything else, and dried so gently that we haven't uh, messed with any of the attributes of the profile of that product. So um, there really is no comparison, none whatsoever. So if you're an IBO and, you know, this is a business. And uh, like me, anytime I'm involved in a business, I want to know everything about the business, the good, the bad, the ugly, and how we set ourselves apart from everybody else. This by far should be your best feature benefit as far as somebody bringing this up. This should be your best arrow in your quiver for um, helping people get past this. It's a real, it's a real issue. It does exist. Microcystis is a, a, a neuro or a, a hepatoxin, um, and it's a, a micro contaminant uh, that grows in the lake alongside AFA in different cycles. So there's times that microcystis is high and AFA is low. Well, during those times, we don't harvest. So even during the harvest times, there could be cycles. There's usually four to five cycles that we find uh, that we test with microscopes out there and do plate counts of what we you know, see. Um, and if it's below a certain plate count, we harvest that day. 
and uh, using a methodology that that even if there is microcystis, it doesn't stick to the strings that that we use in that uh, methodology. So with microcystis, the, the good, um, you know, the, the bad thing about it is um, if it's ingested in large quantities, um, it it's a neurotoxin, uh, hmm. uh, uh, or a, I'm sorry, take that back, a hepatoxin that that uh, degrades your liver. So it's a bad thing, and you don't want it present. Um, so we take ours. The I think over a little over ten years ago, the the permissible human level for consumption was somewhere around ten to twelve parts per million. We hmm. actually take ours below one part per million. So we, I mean, we have less than regular drinking water coming out of your faucet. So hmm. there's really no chance of that being in your product. And the reason for that is we have a patented process uh, that can remove, even if there is microcystis present with the AFA that we harvest, we can run it through that process and it separates the two in an aqueous state. So before it even gets to any of our downstream wet process where we spin it with a centrifuge and concentrate it with a uh, uh um sorry uh <laughs> concentrate it with a reverse osmosis that we use in reverse um the the microcystis has been removed so hmm. uh so literally this is where we set ourselves apart from anybody else in the world we're the one that hold the intellectual property on this and we do not share it with anybody else Nobody mm -hmm. can license it from us. They ask, and we've never granted them the ability to, to do this. There was one company that did it. We sued them, and they went away, and they never used it again. So, mm -hmm. um, so we're very serious about keeping this in-house. Uh, and in-house is our symbiotic relationship with, with Cerule and Desert Lake Technologies. So, um, uh, yeah, so this should be the – you should have the absolute best answer – when this comes up, if there's any pushback whatsoever uh, off of somebody Googling Klamath Lake out. Uh, this is one that we're asked probably more often than anything else. And I understand the concern because it's a wild harvest, we have to be opportunistic in the ability to harvest when it's harvestable. Um, so, um, just for perspective, uh, we've been around since, you know, 1998, uh, and we've never had a year that, uh, that we didn't harvest and, and have, uh, you know, enough. What we were lacking in the early years was the, uh, the, per, um, the increase in efficiencies of our methodologies in the, in the way that we uh, uh, either extrapolated or processed. So we are always in a constant state of uh, R&D. We're always trying to, the dryers that I just talked about, we have a, a 3.0 version of it that, that creates a more efficient and a better product, to be honest with you. Um, and, uh, uh, but when it comes to the lake, this is, this is a great question. Um, the, with it being the largest body of water in the state of Oregon, which is approximately two, it's about 28 miles long by about eight miles wide, hmm. approximately 235 square miles. Within that, we literally harvest from about one and a half miles, square miles. And hmm. um, so if there was a need for us to scale because Cerule sales kind of go through the roof and you guys go through world domination, all we have to do is build more harvesters. But mm. I can't do that unless the POs or the purchase orders or the need is there because it has to make sense. Because of our symbiotic relationship, it depends on your sales. So if mm -hmm. your sales go through the roof, I just build more harvesters. It's real easy for me. We control every part of the process prior it to being sent to you guys uh, um, to be put into pill form. So we're the bulk suppliers. We're in control of all the methodologies. Um, that should be the least of your worries. And if you look at 230 miles, we're literally harvesting from less than 0.5% of that lake right now. So um, yeah, I would love to just see the problem that we finally went over 1%.
Right. If you guys could get me over 1%, I would be stoked. That'd right. be 2.3 miles. So add a mile, that means your sales are going to double. Mm -hmm. So exponentially speaking, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, we could eventually run out if everybody on earth was double dosing on every single product <laughs> that you had. So yeah, at that point, what a great problem to have for the IBS.